This is the Exxon Broadcast Network, broadcasting worldwide on broadcast affiliates and satellite program providers, including CNN Broadcast Network, Sirius Satellite Network, Star Media, Good News Radio Network, Angel Broadcast Network, Wiki Broadcast Network, and WPBN-TV. For more information on the X-Zone Broadcast Network, visit us at www.xzbn.net. All Hit Radio! To the X Zone, a place where fact is fiction and fiction is reality. Now, here's your host, Rob McConnell. And welcome to the X Zone, everyone. My name is Rob McConnell, coming to you from our broadcast center in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. Worldwide toll free, 1 800 610 7035. Email xzone at xzoneradiotv.com. On MSN Messenger, Skype, and all the other social media networks, one very simple address, xzone radio, and our website, www.xzoneradiotv.com. Xzone Nation, this hour we're going to be asking my guest, uh, whose name is John Horvat II, how do we prepare for the coming cultural storm? Now, Scholar says people of like minds must come together, think beyond the bunker, and I love that. Is stockpiling the only way to prepare for a cultural and uh, sociopolitical crisis? Well, my guest says no, and this is a quote. We're like a ship facing a threatening storm, says award-winning writer John Horvath II, author of Return to Order, From a Frenzied Economy to an Organic Christian Society, Where We've Been, How We Got There, and where we need to go now, his website is www.returntoorder.com. And joining me now from Pennsylvania, not too far away from Gettysburg, is John Horvat. And John, welcome to the X Zone. Great to be on your show, Rob. Super having you, John. Thanks very much for taking time out of your very busy schedule. And these certainly are trying times. And uh, this, the timing for this interview couldn't couldn't have been planned years ago. John, what is happening in our world today, and how do you describe the cultural storm that we're looking at? Well, I think the storm that we're, we're facing is, uh, it is a cultural storm. Mm-hmm. It is something that is, uh, has its manifestations in economy. Well, I mean, that is also part of our culture. And uh, it has uh, its manifestations in the, p- the political crisis, especially here in America, where there is a deadlock, uh, where nothing seems to be able to, you know, get things together to push things ahead. Mm-hmm. And uh, the polarization of our country, at least, is, is, a, very, is a sign of this, of this cultural storm. Uh, we just can't get our act together. We can't agree upon things. And uh, it's, I think it's, it's, it's a very grave problem that uh, everyone's going to have to face in some, one way or another. Do you think, based on what you see and, and what you perceive to be down the road, that we are nations, and uh, this just isn't in the United States, I'm talking about Canada and other, other major free nations, that we are too politically correct and that this political correctness is also fueling the fire of a cultural storm? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. I think we might even add to that the, the idea of religious persecution, because mm-hmm. uh, it's getting to that point where you can't say or think or, or do anything that uh, you know, is, is in line with your faith. So, yes, 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 the political correctness yeah. it is a, it just, uh, it's an amazingly intolerant uh, mechanism in place. It, it, it defeats the the different amendments of different charters, not only in the United States, uh, but in Canada as well. And what I can't understand is how come, after all these years of us being able to pray in our schools, if we were able to talk about religion openly, there was nothing about persecution. It was, we were allowed to do it. But now, because of the total uh, influx of 
of people from other religions and other philosophies coming into our countries, we have to shut up. Right, exactly. Makes no sense to me. Does it make sense to you? No, absolutely not. I think uh, largely a lot of this is because of the uh, misunderstanding of the idea of, uh, of a separation mm-hmm. of church and state. I mean, the, uh, as I say in my book, uh, the church and state should get along. There should be bridges of cooperation and not iron curtains of separation. What I can't understand about the separation of church and state is if we look at the United States, on the back of the $1 bill it says, In God We Trust. When we go to court, we pray, and we don't pray, but we swear that we are going to be telling the truth. And uh, as far as I know, you still use the Bible. So how can you have separation of church and state when church and state are so embedded into one another? Absolutely. It's part of a culture. And uh, you know, the, uh, the, the, the church has its certain functions mm-hmm. that the state should not interrupt, uh, mainly the salvation of souls. And the state has functions that uh, the church really shouldn't get involved in. But there are a lot of, 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 let's say, material in between where both of them should get involved and, and cooperate, and, and it's, it's only a natural thing. That's right. I agree with you 100%. I'm looking forward to this next hour with you, John. Exonation John Horvath is our very special guest. His website is www.returntoorder.com. Dot O-R-G. And the question we're asking is, how do we prepare for the coming cultural storm? This is the Exxon. My name is Rob McConnell, and we're coming to you from our broadcast center in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada, and around the world on the Exxon Broadcast Network and our fine family of broadcast affiliates and satellite programming distributors. We'll be back with John Horvat on the other side of this two-minute commercial break. Don't go away. Modern Esoteric, Beyond Our Senses by Brad Olson, consummates the lifeology story about where humanity originates. It is the lost continents, the primitive wisdom, the mythos of creation, and the rethinking of ancient history as we are taught in academia. There is much more to the story than what we have been told. As this is the first book in the Esoteric series, Modern Esoteric starts at the beginning of time and accelerates up to this modern age. Future Esoteric is book two in the series and takes a forward-looking position ahead of today with an open and honest examination of the ET issue and various unexplained phenomena. To discover the writings of author Brad Olson, visit www.bradolson.com. That's www.bradolson.com. Named one of the world's greatest psychics, Elizabeth Joyce is now giving readings worldwide via Skype. Elizabeth Joyce is recognized for her clairvoyant ability to help find missing persons, her analysis of dreams, past life regression work, mediumship, and her accurate predictions. Elizabeth has been a frequent guest on the X-Zone radio show with yours truly, Rob McConnell, now for several years. For an appointment with Elizabeth Joyce, call 201-934-8986 or Skype at elizabeth.joyce. And for more information, you can always visit Elizabeth Joyce online at www.new-visions.com. Have a disease that you would like to alleviate through a natural means? Have you been contacted by angels, ghosts, or even extraterrestrials and want to validate these experiences? Or would you simply like to speak with someone who can help you find your life's purpose? I'm Dr. Joseph Mara, and I'm offering my services free of charge for first-time clients contacting me during the month of April. These free consultations include angel card readings, guided meditations, life coaching, and energy healing. If you have always wanted to explore these types of experiences but were skeptical or simply could not afford them, 
then take advantage of this free special offer. Contact me through my website, a guiding light spelled L-I-T-E dot com, to schedule your consultation today. Until then, I offer you love, light, and laughter. Exxon Nation, John Horvat is my special guest. His website is www.returntoorder.org. And uh, John, tell us about your book and what the inspiration behind the story is. Well, the book is called Return to Order, From a Frenzied Economy to an Organic Christian Society, Where We've Been, How We Got Here, Where We Need to Go. Mm -hmm. And it's a book that uh, says that our economy and culture is frenzied and out of balance and that we need to return to an order, especially based upon family, faith, and community, that naturally puts things back in order. You know, these are the natural mechanisms that keep our economy balanced and our society balanced. And, you know, this is really the only way we have to go. You can't legislate order into existence or regulate it into existence. It has to uh, go with the natural uh, human nature, Mm -hmm. uh, based on human nature. When did we start going wrong? Well, I mean, there there are a lot of let's say uh, milestones that you could you could cite um, as far as economy is concerned, and I deal a lot with economy because people pay attention to economy a lot mm-hmm. more than other things. Uh, but from a part of view of economy, I would say from the Industrial Revolution onward, and uh, that's not being uh, against industry or, <laughs> or progress or Understood. technology. It's merely saying that from that point on, uh, things became extremely much more frenzied, out of balance, and, and men began serving technology, and technology is made to serve man. Are we prepared to handle the rate at which technology is growing? We are, in my opinion, we are over, uh, overcome with the amount of data that we are each and every one of us required to process every day. Uh, it just seems like, bang, technology's here, and like you said, it's running you. Google Glasses, the, uh, you, everybody walks around with a, with a handheld device. People are looking down more than they are ahead of them these days. Are we ready for this technological influx that we're, that we're subjected to every day? No, no, we're not. And I think that's what accelerates the process. That's what accelerates the storm that we're mm-hmm. facing. Uh, obvi- I mean, it just it is overwhelming, and it's just increasing every 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 millisecond, if you'd like. But um, I think there are also a lot of people who are um, are, are you know just somewhat disenchanted with it. They want to leave these, mm-hmm. this uh, dependency upon technology, and you know they they want to return to order. It's it's it, people are feeling the the pressure from it all. What are the signs you see that Americans are sailing into a grave crisis? Uh, the signs um, that I see are uh, largely based on that polarization that I mentioned earlier. Mm-hmm. You know, the, the fact that, um, as I mentioned in the book, our, our nation, the American nation, uh, and a lot of, of nations at the same time that America was founded, is based on the idea of a a uh, cooperative union. It's sort of uh, like uh, a, co- uh, a nation is, is, is organized like a company, like a commercial enterprise. Mm-hmm. And in fact, the, the American founders called our country a commercial republic. And that was the idea, well, we just need to get along so everybody can make money. And uh, what has happened is that that commercial union, that cooperative union, is now breaking down. And uh, it's uh, people are seeing, well, this, this, this cooperative union is not, not uh, paying out dividends. It's not doing what it should do. And so it's, it's really causing a fragmentation, people just going their own ways, uh, you know, uh, bunkering down, as I mentioned uh, in, the, in the press release. Sure. And so um, 
that and what we need now is is exactly the opposite. We need to come together, <laughs> and uh, I think the.